Hello and welcome to Panther Baseball Field, where Liberty Hill Panthers will take on the Grin Grizzlies in this District 25 5A matchup. Coming into this game, Liberty Hill is 15 8 and 1, looking to bounce back after losing three of their last four district contest. Meanwhile, the Glen Gr Grizzlies, 2 and 17 on the year, 0 and 6 in district play, looking to pick up their first district win of the season against Liberty Hill. You joined us during the coaches' meeting here, Coach Stephen Hutcherson and Coach Zach Darling for the Grizzlies as Coach Steven Hutcherson will be discussing some ground rules here at Panther Field. Panthers will play their first game in over a week after playing last Thursday against Georgetown and not being able to play this Tuesday because of star testing. Tonight for Liberty Hill is also senior night where the seven seniors for Liberty Hill were honored pre-game here at about 6.15. Seniors on this year's teams, number 8, Jackson Knox, number 12, Ryan Leary, number 13, Everett Huddleston, number 14, Taylor Gutierrez, number 18, Ryan Roden, number 19, Cade, Mato Cade McCoy, and number 22, Jacoby Martinez. They should all get some playing time here. If Liberty Hill can go up early and contain a lead, I'm sure all those seniors will get on the field. We're just awaiting the end of the coaches' meeting here. Looks like it has ended. And we'll go to the PA for starting lineups and national anthem. You are looking live at tonight's game between the Grizzlies of Glenn and your Panthers of Liberty Hill. Please welcome Glenn Grizzly. Number one, Luke Berryhill. Number 11, Brett Hall. Number 10, AJ Click. Number eight, Caleb Yoder. Number 24, Titus Scott. Number seven, Emerson Milwaukee. Number three, Noah Reichel. Number 22, Holden Harris. Number 18, Jose Benacourt. Number 20, Heath McCormick. Number two, Ashley Bonneville. Number five, Campbell Krasinski. Number nine, Landon Sloan, number 13, Rome Granada, and number 14, Ethan Berman. And now, your Liberty Hill Varsity Panthers. Number four, Logan Bailey. Number 20, Brody Blade. Number 11, Trent Eller. Number 16, Taylor Gutierrez. Number 13, Everett Huddleston. Number 9, Ty Maldonado. Number 17, Jacoby Martinez. Number 3, Chase Maxwell. Number 14, Blaze Milo. Number 19, Cade McCoy. Number 2, Garrett Neely. Number 6, Lane Rabarski. Number 15, Connor Sherman. And 22, Tyler Williams. And now for your starting lineup. At shortstop, number 12, Ryan Leary. At DH, number 23, Aiden Thomas. At second base, number 8, Jackson Knox. At center field, at number five, Logan Dyer. At third base, number 10, Kay Neuenschwander. At first base, number 24, Cash Turkin. At left field, number 21, Kobe Demers. At right field, number seven, Jack Stavanov. At catcher, number one, Carson Riley. And on the mound tonight, at pitcher, number 18, Ryan Roden.
we'd like to welcome you back here to Vibe Live, where you're listening to Liberty Hill Panthers as this game here is about to get underway. It's a hot one tonight. Highs in the mid-90s today. It's the hottest day in 2021 so far. Starting on the mound for Liberty Hill here is number 18, Ryan Roden, the senior, getting his start on senior night. He plans to go to Texas Tech and major in engineering. And he'll start his warm-up here on the mound. Starting lineup tonight for Liberty Hill if you're unable to hear it clearly. As number 12, Ryan Leary leading off. Number second bank second, number 23, Andon Thomas. Bank third, number 8, Jackson Knox. Clean up here, number 5, Logan Dyer. Bank fifth, number 10, Cade Nunschwander. Hitting sixth, number 24, Cash Durkin. Hitting seventh, number 21, Colby DeMars. Hitting eighth, number 7, Jack Stavanoa. And batting ninth, number 1, Carson Riley, your starting catcher as Roden here will enter his final warm-up pitch here. Carson Riley behind the plate for Liberty Hill in his fourth consecutive district start as he appears to have won the starting catcher battle with fellow catcher Garrett Neely. Leading off here for the Grizzlies is going to be number one Luke Berryhill. He will take his first at bat for the Grizzlies against Roden. Roden on the rubber, working from the windup, first pitch. Bunt from Barry Hill, fouled into the netting here, down the first baseline. O one 1 count to Barry Hill, pitch from Roden. Fastball inside. Called ball. Barry Hill with a 1-1 count. If you missed our pregame, Liberty Hill losing three of their last four. Looking to get a win here tonight against the Grizzlies. Fastball fouled into the net by Barry Hill. Barry Hill now with a 1-2 count. Roden looking to retire him for the first down of the ball game. Delivers. Curveball high. Ball number two. Two two count for Barry Hill. Pitch. Fastball. Popped up. Knox going out for it. Stavano coming in. Knox calling Stavano off. Able to make the catch for out number one. Good job by Knox. Going out and making the play in shallow right center field. Now batting. Number 11, Brett Hall. That'll be the first out of the inning. And brings up number 11, Brett Hall, to the plate. Hall, the Grizzly center fielder, looking to reach base against Roden. First pitch. Two-seam fastball in there for strike number one. Good action on Roden's two-seam. Started off the plate, tailed back in. Taking a sign from Riley. Roden winds up, delivers. That fastball a little low. Brings the count to one and one. Pitch lined into center field by Hall. And he'll reach with a single. Off a solid line drive into center field. Single by Hall. Brings up Click. A three-hole hitter for the Grizzlies. Roden picks. Hall is back in time at first base. Close play there. Hall has a fairly sized lead there. Liberty Hill will look to minimize 
his potential on the base pass. Roden checks Hall, comes set. Steps off. Hall will jog back down to first. Once again, A.J. Click at the plate for the Grizzlies. Roden, pick. Hall's back in time. The one out here in the top of the first. Liberty Hill playing Glenn in this District 25-5A matchup. Roden goes to the plate. Fastball outside for ball number one. Roden, back on the rubber, set, picks, Hall back in time. Roden will wipe off the rubber of any potential dirt or so. Before checking, Hall comes set. Pitch to the plate, Hall is going. Pitch way outside, Carson Riley not able to make a throw. After that fastball, it brings Click to a 2-0 count as Carson Riley will go talk to Ryan Roden. I have a break here. We want to, uh, during, the, during the senior day uh, awards here at Liberty Hill, they also celebrated the last year's seniors, which included Ryan Flake, Rowan Guerra, Mason Stearns, Gabriel Diaz, Dylan Pogue, Jackson Tolbert, and George Bautista. We want to thank those seniors last year who never got to play their senior day. Throwing back on the mound. Fastball, low for 3-0 and now. Click steps up to the plate. 3-0 count. Roden looking to find the zone with this one. Roden set. Checks Hall. Now Roden back on the rubber after looking at second base. Goes to the plate now. Fastball outside. And now the Gr Glenn Grizzlies will have runners at first and second. After the four-pitch walk, Leary will go try to calm Roden down, a fellow senior. And Glenn will have a courtesy runner for their catcher, A.J. Click. Now with the runners on first and second, Caleb Yolder comes up to the plate with runners in scoring position. Roden looking for a ground ball and a double play from the Panther defense. First pitch fastball by Riley. Runners will take second and third. Now a single scores two for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill kind of coming off a few sh slow starts in their last few district games. Um, notably against Cedar Park. Had three errors in that first inning. Allowed Cedar Park to jump into a 4 nothing lead. And they were able, never able to recover from that. They're looking to not have that happen here on senior night. First pitch from Roden there was a ball. And now Yolder has a 1-0 count. Roden set. Pitch. Fastball. Lined to Stavano in right field for out number two. Hall unable to tag on third base. Liberty Hill now at two outs. They'll look to retire. Now heading up to the plate, Titus Scott. Now batting, 24, Titus Scott. Two outs, Scott heads to the plate with two runners in scoring position. Facing Ryan Roden, the senior.
First pitch from Roden. Fastball, strike one. Roden set, checks Hall, delivers. Fastball low, good block by Carson Riley to prevent Hall on third base from scoring. And now Scott will have a 1-1 count. Scott, the DH for the Grizzlies, will look to live up to his role here. First fit, fastball, lined into center field. One run will score. And Click will be held at third. Glenn able to jump in, uh, out to a 1-0 lead here. A walk and two singles have led to a grizzly run. Now runners on first and third for the Grizzlies. Noah Reichold at the plate. Liberty Hill looking to minimize the damage here. First pitch. Stopped in the dirt by Riley for ball one. Roden struggling a little bit with his control here. And when he has found the zone, the Glen Grizzlies have capitalized. 1-0 to Reichold. Roden. Size a step off. Now back on the rubber will take a sign from Riley. Check Scott at first base. Goes to the plate. Fastball. Fouled out of play. Now a 1-1 count. Roden set. Pitch. Fastball in swine. Inside. Swung on and missed by Reichold. Roden now with a 1 2 count. Working on Reichold. We'll look to get the Panthers into the bottom half of the inning with this one. Pitch from Roden. Fastball. Grounded. Noonschwander will field it. He'll make the throw across for out number three. Good play by Noonschwander. To cut in front of Leary and make the clean throw to first base in the inning. We're heading now to the bottom half of the first here at Liberty Hill. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Ralph. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to Liberty Hill, where the Liberty Hill Panthers will look to bounce back after allowing one run in the top half of the first inning to the Glen Grizzlies. Liberty Hill 3-3 three and three in district play coming into this one. The Grizzlies 0-6, looking to upset the Panthers and get their first district win of the season. On the mound for the Grizzlies is number 22, Holden Harris, and he'll look to shut down the Panther offense in tonight's ball game. Now batting, number 12, Ryan Leary. Leading off for Liberty Hill, number 12, Ryan Leary. Leary also honored at tonight's senior night. Will be heading to Texas State to play baseball at the collegiate level. He'll step in for the Panthers' first at bat against Harris. Harris working from the stretch. First pitch, fastball. Inside, ball number one. Come on, 
Leary back in the box. 1-0 count. Harris pitch. Fastball low. Watching Harris in the warm-ups. He may be struggling with his control on this Panther mound. And we could have a, Liberty Hill could try to use that to their advantage at the plate. Pitch from Holden. Fastball. Fouled out of play by Leary. Brings the count to 2-1. and one. Two one count to Leary. Looking to lead off the inning for the Panthers. That fastball bounces into the strike zone, but it did bounce, so it'll be a ball. Now Leary with a three one count. Now that I think about it, that pitch from Harris there almost looked like cricket. Besides the point. Pitch now. Fastball inside. Leary will take his base. And Liberty Hill will have a leadoff base runner. Leadoff walk by Harris to Leary. Brings up number 23, Andon Thomas. Getting the DH nod tonight. The lefty. And Thomas, first pitch here. Fastball low for ball number one. Out of Harris's five pitches, four of them have been low. Maybe a trend we'll see tonight. Harris now checking. Leary picks him. Overthrows his first baseman. Leary will head for two. He'll round second, head for three. He'll be up at three. He may turn it for home. Now he's going to be out at third base after he made the turn. Kind of slipped. And that'll be out number one for Liberty Hill. I'm going to try to ask for some interference here as Leary, when he rounded third, ran into the pitcher, Harris, and Leary is going to try to get an interference call. They're going to talk this over. I think this ruling is going to be a pretty easy one. I think Leary will stay on third base. Anytime a player, especially one not making the play, stands in the base pass, tends to get ruled interference as it clearly it impacted Leary's decision at third base. Looks like they're going to stay with a call on the field. Bring in Thomas up with one out here. That's something Liberty Hill has been plagued with all year. Some Little mistakes here and there has just impacted their ability to score runs. Now Thomas. Now with a 2-0 count after that ball from Harris. And it looks like the Grizzlies will go and Grizzly pitching coach here will go and talk to Harris. Both starting pitchers tonight struggling with their control early. Glenn able to score one on the top half of this inning. Liberty Hill looking to have the same effect here in the bottom half. Glenn, once again, 2-17 and 17 on the year, looking to pick up their third win and their first of district play. And in Thomas now, heading back to the plate after the little pitcher's meeting. Two zero count for Thomas. Hold and set. Pitch. Fastball low. Ball three. Liberty Hill will be able to use. I should be able to watch some pitches, get on base, be able to score here. If not in this inning. And the following few. Next pitch from Harris. Strike. Bottom half of the zone. And now Thomas will have a 3-1 count.
Harris set pitch fastball low for ball four Thomas now will jog down to first base and bring up the senior Jackson Knox Another Panther senior, Knox, will be heading to Tyler Junior College to continue his collegiate baseball career. Knox starting at second base tonight. Looking to move Thomas over, have some success at the plate. First pitch from Harris, high for ball one. one -oh count to Knox. Harris checking Thomas. Goes to the plate. Curve ball. Low. Ball two. Knox with a 2 0 count now. Facing Harris for the first time. Pitch. Fastball is in there for strike one. Two one count to Knox. Pitch. Fastball. Outside corner for strike two. Knox now with a two two count. I'll have to defend the plate against Harris. Harris picks Thomas. Thomas back in time. Harris, pitch, fastball high, popped out of play by Knox. Knox still with a 2-2 count, looking to stay alive and find a way on for Liberty Hill. Currently trailing 1-0, gets the Glenn Grizzlies here in District 25-5A matchup. That pitch from Harris, curveball, called strike three for out number two. Now number five, Logan Dyer, will head to the plate. Now batting, number five, Logan Dyer. Andon Thomas on first for the Panthers after a walk. Now Dyer at the plate with two outs, looking to keep the inning alive. Dyer, first pitch, watches a fastball for strike number one. Harris taking his signs. Checks Thomas. Set now. Pitch to Dyer. Fastball swung on. Delayed steal by Thomas. Thomas will be out at second base for out number three. We are heading to the top of the second inning. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. I loved playing high school sports. I love the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill. And while we have a minute here, we'd like to remind you that Academy Sports and Outdoors is the presenting sponsor of Vipe Live this spring. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Back on the mound for Liberty Hills, Ryan Roden looking to find the strike zone here 
and be a little more efficient than he was in the first inning. At the plate for the Grizzlies is number 22, Harris, the pitcher for tonight. First pitch swinging, hits it down the right field line, Stavanoa going back on it, able to track it down for out number one. Stavanoa very fast out in right field, able to use his speed there and make the catch for out number one. First pitch fly out from Harris brings up Bittencourt. Roden, first pitch. Fastball, strike one. Roden working from the windup. That one's in there for strike two. Bittencourt with an 0-2 count now. Working against Roden. Roden delivers. Curveball. Tipped off by Bettencourt. Liberty Hill looking for a quick inning here. Looking to go back onto the offensive side of the ball. Score a few runs. And never lose the lead again. Roden. Pitch. Fastball. Called strike three for round number two on Bettencourt. Roden looking much more like his usual self this inning, and he'll look to continue it against McCormick. Now batting, number 20, Heath McCormick. McCormick, the nine hole hitter for the Grizzlies. First pitch from Roden. First pitch, hitting the right, shallow right field. Knox going back on it, calling it. Able to make the catch on the pop up. Dalbert. Now in here the top of the second as we head into the bottom half of the second inning. I am Jason Hebner and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill. And if you're listening to us tonight, I'd like to invite you to listen to us tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock as Liberty Hill will take on the Eastview Patriots at Eastview. I'd like to thank all the listeners for listening in during this Panther baseball season. And I hope you're enjoying it. Leading off here the bottom half of the second inning is number five, Logan Dyer. Getting a second chance in the batter's box after Thomas was caught stealing on a delayed steal attempt. Now batting, number five, Logan Dyer. Dyer, the Panther center fielder. In his seventh district start, Looking to start Liberty Hill off here in the bottom half of the second inning. First pitch from Harris, still on the mound. Grounded sharply to the Grizzly shortstop. Dyer running it out. Good throw from Barry Hill. Retires Dyer in time. Hard hit ground ball, just right at him. And I'll be out number one here. Now batting, number 10, Kate Neuenschwander. Now Neuenschwander at the plate. Getting the nod at third base tonight. Facing Harris. Harris, first pitch. Curveball. Strike one. Harris looking also in more control here. As he looks to lock down this Panther offense. Fastball there's high. Brings the count to one and one. Ooh. 
One and one count. Pitch, curveball, dirt, ball two. Nunchwander with a 2 1 count now. Harris having some difficulty with his sign. Here's the pitch now. Fastball in the dirt. I'll work the count to 3 and 1. That last pitch there, Harris and his catcher click not on the same page. Harris, a little upset, overthrew it, ended up bouncing in the dirt. Now the 3 1 count. Harris working to Nunchwander. Pitch. Fastball. Low for ball four. Nunschwander will toss his bat aside and jog down to first. Third Panther walk. And they'll look to capitalize on the base runners. Lead on. Walk now brings up Durkin. It looks like Time is called on the field. Oh, looks like Durkin had some had a piece of jewelry on. I'll make him remove that. Always get someone. He'll take it off and jog back to the plate. Durkin hitting in the six hole tonight. Had a relatively slow start to this district campaign. But when he's hot He's probably the best hitter on this Liberty Hill club. Durkin now up to the plate, facing Harris. Harris checks Nunchwander, set now. Pitch to Durkin. First pitch fastball, called strike one. Durkin with an 0-1 count. Harris checks Nunchwander. Nunchwander back in time. Pitch to Durkin. Popped into shallow center field. Unable to make a play on it. Nunchwander will be able to get to second base. Little bloop single by Durkin. Now has Liberty Hill with runners on first and second base. Two singles, or the walk in a single, excuse me. Brings up number 21, Colby DeMars, getting his first district start, if I'm not mistaken. He'll look to capitalize with a runner in scoring position. First pitch from Harris, fastball, hit to right field. Grizzly right fielder under it for out number two. DeMars came out first pitch swinging. DeMars came out first pitch swinging. Hit into the right center field gap. The Grizzly right fielder, right gold, able to move over and make the play. With two outs, brings up number seven now, Stavanoa. Runners on first and second for Liberty Hill. First pitch swing, ground ball. Seven all try to break, beak it out here. Unable to beat it out. And that will be a ground out for out number three. And we'll head to the third inning here at Liberty Hill. You are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott and White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. 
you are back here at Liberty Hill as the Liberty Hill Panthers currently trail one to nothing in this District 25 5A contest against the Glenn Grizzlies. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Glenn situated right down the road from Liberty Hill off of Baghdad. Only about a 10 to 15 minute drive from Liberty Hill High School. They've almost become a sort of crosstown rivalry of sorts after Liberty Hill has moved classifications unable to have that same little rival rivalry we had with Burnett only a few years ago. Now Luke Roden back on the mound for Liberty Hill. Looked very good in his last inning of work and will look to continue it for this inning and the rest of the game. Leading off the Grizzlies here. In the top of the third is Luke Berryhill, the shortstop. Roden working from the windup first pitch. Fastball jams Berryhill. DeMars coming in, calling it, able to make the play for round number one. Now back, number 11, Brett Hall. Fly out from Berryhill, brings up Brett Hall. Hall single to center in his last at bat. Would like to replicate his success in this at bat. First pitch from Roden. Showed bunt. Hall pulls back for ball number one. Key to this game for Liberty Hill. They'll be holding the Grizzlies and being able to manufacture runs on their side of the ball. Second pitch with the ball. Third pitch here. Grounded sharply to Neunschwander. Neunschwander able to make the play. Throw it across the diamond for out number two. Neunschwander only a sophomore. A very good defensive third baseman. Able to hold his own at the plate as well. Now with two outs. Now batting, number 10, A.J. Click. Brings up A.J. Click, the Grizzly catcher. First pitch from Roden. Fastball fouled back into the net here. Click starting with an 0-1 count. Now the pitch from Roden. Fastball. Foul tipped by Click. Now with an 0-2 count. Roden with a pitch to waste here. May pull out a curveball or high fastball. Here it is. Fastball outside. A little too far for ball number one. Pitch from Roden. Curveball. A little high. Brings the count to two and two. Home plate umpire doing a good job tonight, not calling the outside or the high. That fastball swung on and missed by Click for out number three. And we'll head to the bottom half of the third, where Liberty Hill will look to put something on the scoreboard and take the lead. You're, I'm Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill, where the Panther offense will look to strike for the first time tonight and score here against the pitcher Holden Harris for the Grizzlies. The Liberty Hill offense unable to manufacture a lot of runs of late, only able to score 
12 runs in our last four games. A little average of three there. But I think it was mainly noticeable in the Leander Lions game with a great outing from their pitcher, Blaze Milam, just unable to produce any runs for him. Leander able to come back there in the bottom half of the seventh off a walk-off single. Now batting, number one, Carson Riley. Liberty Hill really needing the win tonight to go to four and three in district standings and have a better shot at some playoff potential as we head into the second half of district play tomorrow. Riley at the plate for Liberty Hill. First pitch from Harris. Fastball popped out of play by Riley for strike one. Talking about that district standings, Liberty Hill currently tied for third with Georgetown and Rouse. Cedar Park at the top, Leander at second. As Harris curveball chased by Riley for strike two. But with a three-way tie for third right now, Liberty Hill is needing as many wins as they can get, not, not being able to afford a loss to a team like the Grizzlies. Now a pitch from Harris. Fastball high, ball one. One-two count for Carson Riley, trying to lead off the bottom of the third here. Curveball outside for ball two. Harris on the mound for the Grizzlies. Has a fastball curveball combination. Able to use the curveball and early in the count and likes to use the fastball in the late parts. Fastball here high. Works the count to full. Riley should see a fastball here. It's worth noting Harris did struggle with his control early in this game. Pitch here from Harris. Fastball low for ball four. Not sure what happened there as the Grizzlies threw it to first base on the walk from Riley. Strange. Well, we'll get a courtesy runner now for the catcher Carson Riley. Courtesy runner all year has been Ty Maldonado, and it will be him tonight. Second leadoff base runner for Liberty Hill. And number 12, Ryan Leary, will head to the plate. Number 12, Ryan Leary. As many of you know, Ryan Leary is a real slim shady, as mentioned in his walk-up song at the plate. And he's not afraid to tell people himself. First pitch to Leary. Fastball off the plate for ball number one. Leary able to reach base in his first at bat before getting called out at third, trying to take some extra bases. Harris taking a sign from Click. Set now. Picks Maldonado. Maldonado back in time. Harris steps off. Leary with a 1-0 count. Maldonado back safe there. Some District 25 5A news. Georgetown currently leading the Cedar Park High School, or Cedar Park Timberwolves, excuse me, 5 to nothing. as Leary grounds a ground ball. Very weakly, he'll be able to beat this one out. So now Liberty Hill runs at first and second. As I was saying, though, the Eagles currently leading 5 to nothing against the Timberwolves in the third inning, looking for a looking to upset the state-ranked Timberwolves. That one would be good and bad for the Liberty Hill District standings as a Georgetown win would bring the Eagles to 4-3, and three, but a, it would also mean a Cedar Park loss, pushing them to 7-1. and one. Now Thomas at the plate with runners on first and second. First pitch shows bunt, pulls back on a fastball in the dirt for ball one. With no outs in the inning here, Liberty Hill looking to sacrifice bunt and move the runners over to second and third. It's a specialty out of Coach Hutcherson's playbook. He'll look to use it here. Thomas shows bunt, pulls back. Actually, was it fouled? I'm not even sure. Looks like it was fouled. 1-1. One, one. A 
One more opportunity here for Thomas to lay it down. The Glenn Grizzly corner infielders sneaking in. Thomas will show Bunn again here. Shows it early. Able to lay it down this time. Maldonado third. Thomas able to do his job there very well. Leary at second now. Maldonado at third base. And will bring up Jackson Knox. With one out here in the bottom of the third. Liberty Hill looking to gain the lead. Leary with good speed on second base. Anything through the infield here should be two runs for Liberty Hill. Harris taking a sign coming set. First pitch to Knox. Curveball. Called strike one at the letters. Knox looking to prov provide big here in his senior night. Pitch. Curveball. Called strike two on the inside corner. Now with an 0-2 count, it looks like the Grizzlies want to talk something over. We may have some sort of pick play or some sort of discussion here. Kind of strange to see a pitcher-catcher meeting at an 0-2 count where they have all the momentum. No, they're not done yet. They're going to talk it over one last thing. And now Click will jog back to behind the plate. And Harris will step back on the rubber. Leary on second base. Maldonado on third for Liberty Hill. Knox at the plate with an 0-2 count. Pitch to Knox. Fastball in the dirt. Click able to block it, keep it in front of him. And now be one... I'll bring it to a 1-2 count. Harris set. Pitch. Curveball outside. Ball two. Knox now with a 2-2 count. Looking for something to hit from Harris. Big gaps in the outfield for Knox. Left center, right center. Fairly open. Harris and Click not on the same page here. Harris now steps back on the rubber. Set. Pitch. Fastball. Into right center field by Knox. Maldonado tagging. He'll go. He will be up at the plate. And this ball game will be tied. And a sack fry from Jackson Knox. Leary going to try to take the plate. And he is safe at the plate after an overthrow from the Grizzly center fielder. That will give Liberty Hill the lead here. Now up 2-1. to That will be feeling much more comfortable. Knox with the sacrifice fly. Brought in Maldonado from third. Leary was tagging from second. Advanced to third. On the overthrow to the plate, Leary read it very well, never stopped running, and slid into home plate for the second run of the inning. Now at the plate, Je uh, Logan Dyer, excuse me. First pitch to Dyer. Fastball in the dirt will be ball one. Harris, set, pitch. Fastball inside, ball two. Dyer with a 2 0 count, steps back up to the plate. Pitch. Curveball in the dirt. Brings the count to 3 0. Harris a little flustered after allowing the one earned run off the sack fly. And then the air for the second one. It'll be a four-pitch walk for Dyer. And he'll jog down to first. And he'll bring up number 10, Cade Neunschwander. Now batting number 10, Cade Neunschwander. If Neunschwander reaches base here, judging on the body language from the Grizzly dugout, 
It looks like Harris's night could be over. Now Dyer on first base. Very good base runner. Harris first pitch to Nunchwander. Curveball in there, strike one. Harris likes to use that curveball in his first pitch. Able to control it well and uses it to his advantage. Harris now, pitch. Another curveball. That one outside brings the count to one and one for Nunchwander. Harris set, pitch, fastball in the dirt, brings the count to two and one. Once again, if you're just joining us, Liberty Hill able to take the lead here in the bottom half of the third, now leading two to one against the Glen Grizzlies in this District 25-5A matchup. Harris the pitch, fastball low again, now three one count. Also on that note, if you're listening tonight, we'd like to invite you to listen tomorrow at 1 o'clock where Liberty Hill will be playing the Eastview Patriots at Eastview High School. Once again, at 1 o'clock, we'd love for you to listen in. Pitch, grounded by Nunchwander to the second baseman. The Grizzlies able to make the play for out number three. We're now heading to the top of the fourth. I'm Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape. Meet new people and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Ralph. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to Liberty Hill. Ryan Roden back on the mound for Liberty Hill. Very solid performance tonight. Only allowing that one earned run in the sing in the first off of two Glenn Grizzly singles. Has looked very dominant in the last two innings. And we'll look to continue that. Now with a Liberty Hill lead. We'll try to play it out for the win. Good throw down from Carson Riley. And Caleb Yolder will head to the plate. Now batting, number eight, Caleb Yolder. Yolder in a second at bat. Will look to reach base for the Grizzlies against Roden. Roden working out of the windup. First pitch of the inning. Fastball at the letters for strike one. Good first pitch fastball from Roden. Brings it to his second pitch. Fastball outside. Brings the count to one and one. Roden the wind up. Pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Brings the count to two and one. Yolder with a 1 2 2 1 count, excuse me. That pitch grounded up the middle. Leary able to feel un unable to feel it cleanly actually. And Yolder will reach base on the air by Leary. Leary unable to field that one cleanly. 
and it brings number 24 Titus Scott to the plate. Leary would like nothing more than a ground ball to him, so him and Knox could turn a 6-4-3 double play here. Roden set. First pitch of Scott. Scott shows bunt, pulls back on a fastball in the zone for strike one. Yolder on first base for the Grizzlies. Scott at the plate. Roden. Pitch. Runner goes. Riley. Unable to make a clean transition. And Yolder will reach second base. Now it counts one and one. That fastball called outside. Grizzlies now with the runner in scoring position, looking to take back the lead here in the top of the fourth. Scott shows bunts, pulls back. Now a 2 1 count. Riley's going to go talk to Roden. You're just joining us. Liberty Hill currently leading 2 to 1 in this District 25 5A matchup against the Grin the Glen Grizzlies, excuse me. The Grizzlies at the plate right now with a runner in scoring position with Yolder at second base. Roden taking a sign from Riley, trying to get the first out of the inning on Scott. Pitch, Scott shows bunt. Won't commit to it for strike two. Second time this at this at bat, Scott has showed bunt and pulled back on a fastball in the strike zone. Now the 2 2 count, Scott will be swinging and he'll look to get an RBI in his stat chart. Roden, pitch to the plate, grounded weakly, foul. Nunchwaner smart on the weak ground ball to field it in the foul territory. So it's called foul. As Scott had a good chance of beating that one out if it was fielded in play. Scott now with a 2-2 count on him. Looking to do something for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill looking to keep their lead intact and get out of this inning without any problems. Roden checks Yolder, delivers. Curveball popped weakly out of play. Count will remain at two and two. Two two count, two Scott, Roden the pitch, fastball, grounded weakly to first base. Dirk and able to make the play. Roden covering, will retire for out number one. Good job there by Durkin going over and getting it, and by Roden of going and covering the base. One out now with a runner on third base for the Grizzlies. At the plate now is number three, Noah Reichold. One out here in the top of the fourth. The Grizzlies with the runner on third base. Pitch from Roden. Fastball blocked by Riley. Reichold with a 1-0 count now. Roden takes his sign from Riley. Set now. Checks the older. Goes to the plate. They're showing bunt. Pulls back for ball two. Glenn may be attempting a suicide squeeze here. Actually, it'd be a safety squeeze. There's not two outs here. 
pitch from Roden. Hit into center field. Dyer able to make the play. Yolder will be able to tag. And that will be a tie ball game. Good job by Reichel to get a ball in the outfield. So Yolder was able to tag on third base. It's now a tie ball game at 2-2. Two and two. Now to play the pitcher, Holden Harris, working against Roden. First pitch, fastball inside for a ball. The Grizzlies are not going away in this one, and will look to get their first district win of the season against the Panthers. On the flip side, Liberty Hill desperately needing a win, trying to go 4-3 and three in district play, and gain some momentum after losing three of their last four. Pitch from Roden. Fastball in there for strike one. As it stands now, Liberty Hill is fourth in the district standings. As that fastball by Harris is hit to the left center field gap, Dyer able to field it cleanly and will hold Harris to a single. As I was saying, Liberty Hill fourth in the district standings, which as of now would be a playoff spot. They're tied for third with three separate teams and a few unneeded losses to teams such as the Grizzlies here. It would really hurt their playoff chances going forward. Liberty Hill offense will need to come alive in the later half of this game in order to ensure a Panther victory. Roden, first pitch to Battencourt, fouled back for strike one. Roden, Checks Harris. Harris back in time. It's actually not Harris, it's a courtesy runner. Excuse me. But an 0 1 count to Bedden Court at the plate. He'll pick. Runner back in time for the Grizzlies. Roden will pick again. And we'll have an O. Bencourt still with an 0-1 count at the plate with two outs here in the top of the fourth. Roden set. Pitch. Runner going. Riley. Throw a little to the left. Riley wanting interference with Bencourt. I'm not sure he's going to get it. Looks like he won't get it. But now Roden with an 0-2 count to Bencourt. We'll look to retire him here and end this half of the inning. Runner in scoring position for the Grizzlies. Roden the pitch to the plate. Curve ball. High and away. Four ball one. Bencourt at the plate for the Grizzlies, apparently with a 1-2 count, facing Roden. Pitch from Roden, fastball inside, swung on and missed for out number three, and we'll head to the bottom half of the fourth inning, where Liberty Hill will look to score some runs and take the lead here against the Glen, Gri the Glen Grizzlies. Excuse me. I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, 
Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill with Harris still on the mound for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill will look to score some runs here. Take the lead back. Hopefully a comfortable one. With a win tonight, they'd beat a 4-3 and three in district play. As I've talked about all night, that'd be critical for their potential playoff standings as we head into the second half of district play tomorrow against Eastview. Leading off for Liberty Hill in the bottom half of the fourth is number 24, Cash Durkin. The starting first baseman tonight. First pitch from Harris. Curveball. Fouled out of play by Durkin. First pitch swinging. Durkin back in the plate now. Harris steps off. As he was taking a sign from his catcher, A.J. Click. Harris now sets. Pitch to Durkin. Curveball. Grounded to second base by Durkin. Durkin running it out. Bad throw from the Grizzly second baseman. Durkin trying to advance to second base, and he will. The Grizzly second baseman rushed the throw a little bit. And now Durkin will be at second base as a leadoff base runner. Brings up number 21, Colby DeMars. DeMars looking for an RBI here. Liberty Hill desperately needing to score some runs and establish a lead in this one. Shows bunt, pops it high, foul. A foul bunt attempt will bring the count to 0-1 as Liberty Hill is trying to find a way to get Dirk into third base. DeMars steps back into the box. Facing Harris in his fourth inning of work. Shows bunt. Pulls back. Brings a count to one and one. Sun is down now in Liberty Hill after one of the hottest days of the year this afternoon. DeMars showing bunt again. Harris the pitch. Curveball outside. Brings a count to two and one. DeMars, no doubt, here again. We'll show Bunt. We'll look for a successful laydown. Or Harris. We'll look to throw a strike here. DeMars shows Bunt. Pitch from Harris. In the zone for strike number two. With two strikes now, DeMars will be swinging. He'll look to move Durkin over any way he can. Harris. Pitch. Fastball in the, in the dirt. Brings the count to full. Pitch. Popped way up in the air by DeMars. Center fielder under for the Grizzlies. Able to retire it for out number one. Pop up by DeMars brings up Stavanoa to the plate. Now batting. Number seven. Jack Stavanoa. 
Durkin on second base for Liberty Hill. Stavano at the plate with one out. First pitch, curveball in there for a called strike. A one count to Stavano. Pitch from Harris here. Fastball inside. Brings the count to one and one. Liberty Hill looking to take the lead back here in the bottom of the fourth against the Glen Grizzlies. Glen 0 and 6 in district play on the year, looking to get their first win. Liberty Hill 3 and 3, looking to move to 4 and 3. Fastball there is fouled off by Stavanoa. We'll bring the count to 1 and 2. Stavano with a 1-2 count. Steps back up to the plate. Facing Harris, the pitcher for the Grizzlies. Pitch from Harris. Curveball in the dirt. Click doing a good job behind the plate on those balls in the dirt. Two two count now. Pitch to Stavanoa. Foul out of play behind the Panther bleachers. Back in the box, Stavanoa facing Harris with a 2 2 count. Harris steps off. Back on the rubber now. Durkin on second base for the Panthers. Liberty Hill needing a run here. Pitch, fastball in the dirt. Brings the count to full. Full count now. Stavanoa. Pitch from Harris. Fastball. Swung on and missed by Stavanoa for route number two. Strikeout by Stavanoa. Brings up number one, Carson Riley. Riley will look to single here and score Durkin on second base. Harris, first pitch to Riley. Curveball called strike one. Pitch to Riley. Grounded through the hole at second base. Durkin waved around. He will be up at the plate, and Liberty Hill will take the lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Liberty Hill leading 3-2 after the RBI single through the hole at second base by Carson Riley. You can hear the wind on our crowd mic here as the wind has picked up as the sun has gone down in Liberty Hill. Ryan Liberty Hill with only their second lead of the game. Now with two outs in the bottom of the fourth, back at the top of the lineup, and Ryan Leary. Maldonado, the courtesy runner for Riley, a Panther catcher. First pitch to Leary. Fastball, strike one. Leary upset, he didn't swing at that one. Leary. Facing Harris. Pitch from Harris. Curveball. Leary. Swing and a miss. Maldonado. Delayed steal. He'll be safe at second base after Barry Hill for the Grizzlies. Unable to secure it. Now Leary, a runner on scoring position with an 0-2 count. Will have to stay alive. Looking to score Maldonado from second base. Curveball. Hand to center field by Leary. Grizzly center fielder under it. Able to make the play for out number three. 
We are heading to the fifth inning here at Liberty Hill. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back to Liberty Hill, where it looks like Jackson Knox has got the call in relief for the Panthers. Now put number 14, Taylor Gutierrez at second base. But Knox making his first relief appearance of the district season will look to shut down the Grizzlies and keep the Panther lead intact for the remainder of this ballgame. Knox, one of the seniors, honored on tonight's senior night, is attending Tyler Junior College to further his athletic career. And he'll look to provide some relief here for Ryan Roden. Roden went four innings of work, able to hold the Grizzlies to two runs, and is now set up for the win. At the plate for the Grizzlies is McCormick. First pitch from Knox. Fastball inside ball one. One oh counts McCormick. Knox working from the windup. Fastball low for ball two. Pitch from Knox, fastball, fouled out into the parking lot by McCormick. Works his count to two and one. Liberty Hill looking to keep as few as base runners on as possible to limit the scoring opportunities for the Grizzlies. Pitch here from Knox, fouled down the right field line out of play. Another defensive substitution. Number 19, Cade McCoy, is in at first base. As the pitch from Knox to McCormick. Curve ball, swung on to miss, drop third strike. Riley, great play by McCoy at first base. And I'll be out number one. Riley threw it a little high. McCoy, a great jumping catch. And now lead to out number one here in the top of the fifth. Now batting, number one, Luke Berryhill. Brings up the Glenn leadoff hitter, Luke Berryhill, in his third at bat. And Knox, a look to keep him packing. First pitch fastball high for ball number one. Knox, pitch, fastball on the dirt for ball two. Knox, the pitch, popped out of play, works the count to two and one. Barry Hill steps back in the box now. With one out here in the top of the fifth. That fastball gets away from Knox. 
Barry Hill will take his base after being hit by a fastball in the mid chest area. Now the, the Grizzlies tying run on first base here in the top of the fifth where it looks like this game will come down to a few runs so everyone is important. Knox now from the stretch first pitch fouled out of play down the right field line first strike one that's Hall at the plate now Hall able to single in the first not able to reach last time. Knox will pick Barry Hill back in time. Oh, one count. Pitch from Knox. Curveball grounded into the Panther dugout. Four strike two. Oh, two count. Knox taking his signs from Riley. Decides to pick. Barry Hill back in time. Pitch here from Knox. Fastball outside brings the count to one and two. Pitch from Knox to Hall. Curveball is low. Works the count to two and two. Knox picks to first. Barry Hill back easily. Knox now taking a sign from Riley. Working to Hall. Pitch. Fastball outside works to count to full. Knox really needing the out here. Cannot afford the Grizzlies two base runners. Runner goes, swing and a miss for out two. Runner will be safe. Barry Hill able to steal second. But not before. Knox able to strike out Hall for out number two. Barry Hill going there as the count was full Carson Riley unable to catch him at second base now at two outs here in the top of the fifth AJ Click at the plate the Grizzly catcher Click looking to tie the game Liberty Hill looking to keep the lead. First pitch fastball. Riley unable to find where it is. And Barry Hill will take third base. That fastball in the dirt bounced off of Riley's gear. He just unable to locate where it was. Barry Hill taking advantage. Took third. Now the Grizzlies tying run at third base. Pitch to Knox. Pitch from Knox, excuse me. Fastball. Brings the count to one and one on click. If you're just joining us, Liberty Hill currently leading three to two against the Grizzlies. Grizzlies looking to tie the ball game here in the top, top, top half of the fifth. As Knox throws a fastball for strike two. One two count for click. Knox looking to retire him on this pitch. Knox set. Pitch. Fastball. Fouled into the net. Count will remain at one and two. Knox. Set. Pitch. Hard line drive hit through the hole past Leary. Barry Hill will score, and this ball game will be tied. The
Grizzlies. Not out of this one yet. After the RBI single from Click, Caleb Yolder will come to the plate, but not before Coach Fisher will go out and talk to his senior pitcher. While we have this little downtime, I would like to honor the rest of the seniors that we haven't got a chance to talk about tonight. Uh, number 13, Everett Huddleston, will be going to Texas A&M Corpus Christi after he graduates this May. Uh, 14, Taylor Gutierrez is planning on becoming a Marine. And number 19, Kate, or actually, number, excuse me, number 19, Kate McCoy, is going to Texas A&M. And number 22, Jacoby Martinez, plans to join the Air Force. Uh, I know this program appreciates those seniors and all they've done, and they're actually the first group of seniors that Coach Stephen Hutcherson has had the ability to coach all four years. Are the coaches meeting there done? Knox facing Caleb Yolder with a tied ball game, looking to get the third out of this inning. First pitch popped way up. Gutierrez going out on it, calls it off, able to make the catch for out number three. Now with three, now we'll head to the bottom half of the fifth, where Liberty Hill will look to take the lead back on some offense. I'm Jason Hebner and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. Welcome back from that short break. While we have some downtime here, I'd like to thank by QA tonight, Cameron Songer, making sure we were good for a test run earlier, making sure we sound clean and crisp for when we come on with y'all. Also with that downtime, I'd like to remind you that Academy Sports and Outdoors is the presenting sponsor of Vibe Live this spring. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Thank you to Academy there, and once again, thank you to my QA, Cameron Songer, back in the Vipe Live headquarters, as my old friend Jay Sanders used to say, for doing everything he has done tonight, just not just for me, but for every broadcast he's monitoring. That being said, currently have a 3-3 tie here, heading to the bottom half of the fifth. Harris back on the mound for the Grizzlies. Thomas leading off for Liberty Hill. Tied ball game here in Liberty Hill. Thomas stepping up to the plate. Facing Harris for the third time, just working it to a 2-0 count early. Looking to start this Panther offensive series and take the lead against the Grizzlies. Pitch from Harris. Fastball outside and away. Brings a count to 3-0. Liberty Hill looking for Thomas to reach base to start the bottom half of this inning. That pitch called strike one. Works the count to three and one. Harris taking a sign, comes set. Pitch, fastball, strike two on the outside half. Thomas with a full count now. Looking to do something here against Harris. That pitch hits softly to the second baseman. 
and that'll be out number one. A little line out from Thomas will bring out number eight, Jackson Knox, to the plate. Pitch. First pitch curveball, high for ball number one. That fastball, high for ball number two to Knox. Knox looking to help his own cause. Now the relief pitcher for the Panthers, looking to take the lead and keep it on the mound. That pitch hit hard into left field, will bounce off the wall. Knox will take second base and looks to have a stand-up double here in the bottom half of the fifth. Knox able to hit that high fastball straight down the line and will now will bring up number five, Logan Dyer, to the plate. Liberty Hill with runners in scoring position, looking to capitalize. This team, this district, this district campaign has been unable to capitalize on a few situations like these that have cost them some ball games. Harris with a, a leading run at second base will talk it over with his catcher, AJ Click. Looks like they have discussed what they wanted to. And Dyer now will step back into the box. Knox on second base. Dyer at the plate for Liberty Hill. Looking to take the lead here in the bottom half of the fifth. First pitch swinging. Dyer unable to make contact for strike one. Dyer, 0-1 count. Pitch from Harris. Curveball grounded up the middle. Knox will advance to third. Dyer will be out at first base. Now with two outs. Number 13, Everett Huddleston, will come up to the plate. A senior. Getting a plate appearance on senior night. A much needed plate appearance for Liberty Hill really needing that run on third base to score now batting number 13 Everett Huddleston Huddleston is a decent hitter can put the ball in play he will have a little bit of pressure on him here looking to give Liberty Hill back the lead Harris set first pitch to Huddleston Fastball, swung on and missed for strike one. Huddleston would really like to have an RBI here and give him some future at-bats in these situations. Second pitch, curveball. Good eye from Huddleston. Count will now be one and one. Knox on third base. Will be the, would be the leading run if he scores. Harris pitch. That fa high fastball swung on and missed by Huddleston and now a 1-2 count. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Liberty Hill looking to take the lead with a runner on third base. Huddleston at the plate. Pitch from Harris. Fastball in the dirt. Brings the count to 2-2. Two and two. Harris taking a sign from Click. Has it set now. Pitch. Curveball. Called strike three for round number three. And we will head to the sixth inning where it's a tied ball game in this district 25-5A matchup. I'm Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. 
Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to the Panther baseball field where we are in a tied ball game between the Glen Grizzlies and the Liberty Hill Panthers. Glen looking to get their first district win of the year. Liberty Hill looking to move to 4-3 and three and increase in the district standings. Well, we have a minute here as Carson Riley makes his throw to second base. We'd like to remind you that we will be broadcasting the Eastview game tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We'd love for you to listen in here on Vibe Live as Liberty Hill takes on the Eastview Patriots at Eastview High School. Knox back on the mound here in the top of the sixth for Liberty Hill as Scott will lead off for the Grizzlies. Knox working out of the windup. First pitch to Scott. Fastball low for ball number one. One-zero count to Scott. Pitch from Knox. That fastball low as well. Brings the count to two and zero. Pitch from Knox. Fastball, 3-0. Scott looking to reach base for the Grizzlies. Knox looking to keep him at the plate longer. That fastball is low, and Scott will have a leadoff walk. And the Grizzlies will be looking to score here. Looks like the Grizzlies are going to pinch run for Scott. Trying to maximize their speed on the base pass. Now batting number three, Noah Reichold. As Noah Reichold steps back up to the plate, Reichold with that sack fly in his last at bat, able to push the tying run across for the Grizzlies. And we'll still have the same score of 3-3 three and three since then. The Grizzlies looking to hang around and take the win for their first district win of the season. Knox pitched to Reichel. Reichel showing bunt. Pulls back on a fastball in the zone. First pitch fastball from Knox. Leads to an 0-1 count to Reichold. Reichold shows bunt, able to lay it down. They're going to let it go foul. Smart for strike number two. Reichold has some speed. Probably would have beat that out. Smart play by Knox on the mound to let it roll foul. And now have an 0-2 count. Reichold will be forced to swing. Not necessarily forced, I guess, but 99% of the time, most hitters will not attempt to bunt on strike two as a foul ball would result in an out. Knox looks at the courtesy runner and they're going to call a balk on Knox there. Knox is going to say he stepped off. Field umpire thought he didn't. The, si the situation there is you step off, you don't have to throw it. But if you just spin, you do have to throw it. Coach Hutch will go and talk to the field umpire here. 
and will argue for his pitcher. Knox in his previous pick attempts has stepped off, but it looks like they're not going to get any relief here. Knox with an 0-2 count to Reichold. Will look to get the batter as the Grizzlies have a runner in scoring position. Knox, set, pitch. Fastball swung on and missed by Reichold for out number one. A very needed out by the Panthers. Now with one out, a little more wiggle room, but we'll still need to get out this hitter here. So pitcher Harris, who they've elected to intentionally walk. It appears. Yes, he's been intentionally walked. And it looks like the umpire's going to say something to the Glenn coach on third. And they'll get a courtesy runner for Harris. Liberty Hill electing. Liberty Hill and electing to intentionally walk Harris there to set up for a ground ball double play. Also gives the force out at third. Now one out with runs on first and second for the Grizzlies. Bencourt at the plate. First pitch to Bencourt. Fastball. Strike one. Another thing worth noting. Bencourt, the eight-hole hitter for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill may be looking to get out the eight and nine hole hitter for the Grizzlies. Knox, pitch to Bencourt, curveball, fouled off for strike number two. Knox looking to retire Bencourt and push it to two outs here in the top of the sixth. O2 count to Bencourt. Knox set. Pitch. Fastball. Fouled off by Bencourt. Good job staying alive from the Grizzly hitter. Pitch from Knox. Curveball swung on and missed by Bencourt. Another big strikeout from Knox. The senior making his first district relief appearance. Now, with two outs, he'll send the nine-hole hitter from the Grizzlies, number 20, Heath McCormick, to the plate. First pitch from Knox, fastball, strike one. Knox looking in control now. Liberty Hill really needing an out from McCormick. If they can score in the bottom of the sixth, then they can win the game in the top of the seventh. Pitch from Knox, curveball. High, called a ball. Pitch just a little high. Will work the count for McCormick to one and one. Grizzlies once again with runners on first and second. Trying to push the lead here in Liberty Hill. That pitch fouled back by McCormick. Now Knox with a 1-2 count. Knox will look to strike out McCormick here. As he did Bencourt and before ben Bencourt Reichold. Knox taking a sign from Riley. Set now. Pitch from Knox. Fastball swung on and missed by McCormick for out number three. We're now heading to the bottom of the sixth where Liberty Hill will look to take the lead and then hold out for the save in the top half of the seventh. I'm Jason Hebner and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. 
This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Welcome back to Liberty Hill. Harris back on the mound for the Grizzlies. And Liberty Hill really looking to put up a run here in the bottom of the sixth so they can get the save opportunity in the top half of the seventh and win this district ball game. Leading off for Liberty Hill here in the bottom half of the sixth is number 24, Cash Durkin. And he'll look to start things here for the Panther offense. The main goal right now for Liberty Hill is to find a way to win this ball game. If you're just joining us, the tied ball game between the Grizzlies and the Panthers here in the bottom of the sixth. Liberty Hill looking to move to four and three in district play while the Grizzlies are looking to get their first win of the district campaign. Harris on the mound for the Grizzlies, starting his sixth inning of work. Set, first pitch to Durkin, fastball, grounded to first base by Durkin. Ben Court will step on first for round number one. Looks like we have a pinch hitter here now. Number 17, Cole Jefferson. We'll get the nod against Harris. First pitch from Harris. Fastball. Strike one. Jefferson has a, been a PO this ball this year. Hasn't had much action in the district season. Looking to get something here at the plate. That curveball outside brings the count to one and one. Jefferson, a junior, looking to capitalize in this hitting opportunity. Liberty Hill de desperately needing base runners. On fastball, swung on late by Jefferson. Works the count to one and two. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch from Harris. That fastball is chased by Jefferson for round number two. Now up number seven, Jack Stavanoa with two outs, looking to start a rally for Liberty Hill. Now batting number seven, Jack Stavanoa. The Liberty Hill offense just unable to make anything happen against Holden Harris, the starter for the Grizzlies. First pitch to Stavanoa, lined into center field. That single from Stavanoa. Hopefully provide a spark for this Panther offense and Carson Riley heads to the plate. Riley with an RBI single in his last at bat through the hole at second base. We'll look to reach base here and bring Ryan Leary up to the plate with two runners on. Two outs here. Stavino on first base. Riley at the plate. First pitch from Harris is a curveball for strike one. Harris now set. Pitch. Curveball. Grounded up the middle. He's running it out. The Grizzlies able to make the play at first. And we'll head to the seventh inning where this ball game is tied. 
Liberty Hill will be looking to hold the Grizzlies and score in the bottom half of the seventh to win this ball game. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to Liberty Hill, where the Panthers will look to hold out the Grizzlies, and if not win the game in the bottom of the seventh, at least extend it until we have a winner. I was reading, uh, scrolling through Twitter last week, I saw there's a high school baseball game here in Texas that went 16 innings last Friday. I sure hope that's not the case tonight, and I hope that we can push across a run here in the bottom half of this inning and win this much needed ball game against the Glen Grizzlies. Knox back on the mound for his third inning of work will face Barry Hill, the Grizzly leadoff hitter. Knox, from the working from the stretch, first pitch. Fastball inside for ball number one. Barry Hill with a 1-0 count, looking to reach base for the Grizzlies. Knox looking to prevent him from doing so. That ball is grounded to Noonschwander. Noonschwander will make the throw across the diamond for out number one. One out now for Liberty Hill. Looking to hold the Grizzlies and score in the bottom half of the seventh. At the plate now is number 11, Brett Hall. Hall singled in his first at bat. He'll look to do the same here. First pitch from Knox. Fastball. Just above the letters, called a ball. Knox set. Pitch to Hall. That fastball grounded up the middle. And Hall will reach base on the single through the hole between second and shortstop. Liberty Hill now will face A.J. Click and will look for a ground ball double play. Click the catcher tonight for the Grizzlies. First pitch to him. Curve ball. Low for ball one. Takeoff will not be called a balk as Knox stepped off like he has been doing all night. Pitch from Knox. Runner going. Riley. Good throw. Barry Hill, though, unable to be caught. Now, the Grizzlies have the leading run on second base. The go ahead run on second base with A.J. Click at the plate and one out here in the top half of the seventh. Knox, pitch to the plate, fastball, ball, brings the count to 2-0. and oh. Three out, 
three now. Excuse me. Three zero count. They may elect to walk him here. High fastball. And now put a Grizzly runner on first and second base for number eight, Caleb Yolder. Now batting number eight, Caleb Yolder. As Liberty Hill really looking to hold the Grizzlies in this one. Once again, the Grizzlies looking to pick up their first win of the district campaign. Liberty Hill looking to go four and three and help their potential playoff seating as we head to the second half of district play tomorrow. First pitch to Yolder in there for strike one. Liberty Hill will play Eastview Patriots tomorrow at one o'clock. You can listen in here live as always or the game will be at Patriot Field at Eastview High School. Second pitch from Knox. Curveball in the dirt. Gets by Riley. He's, he doesn't know where it is. And he'll put and he'll put Grizzly Runners at second and third. Knox really now needing to retire. Yolder. Yolder looking to add some runs for the Grizzlies. And then they would look to hold the Panthers in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch here from Knox. Fastball called strike two. One two count on Yolder. Knox looking to retire him with this one. One out in the top of the seventh. Pitch. Hit foul down the right field line. Liberty Hill playing in, looking to prevent the run from scoring and keep this ball game tied. Knox taking a sign from Riley. 1 2 count for Yolder. Set now. Pitch. Curveball. Line through the gap at second base. One run will score. They'll hold. They will hold Hall at third base. The Grizzlies have now taken the lead here, and now lead four to three. Here in the top of the seventh, one out only. Liberty Hill really needing to minimize the damage, and Coach Bisher will go talk to the pitcher and infield. Liberty Hill now will have to minimize the damage here from the Grizzly offense and go score on the other end of the on the other end of the ball. Runners on first and third. Coach Fisher just telling him to play their game, get some outs, and the offense will provide. For the Grizzlies, with now the lead, they will look to hold the Panthers when this top half is over and take their first district win of the season. Knox. Knox checked. Yolder at first. Now he'll go to the plate. Runner going, fouled off by Scott. 0-2 count now. I'd bet here that Yolder is going. Trying to prevent the double play from happening. Scott with an 0-2 count to plate. Knox looking to retire him with this one. Pitch from Knox. Yolder not going. And Scott swings through a fastball for out number two. Now with two outs. Liberty Hill has a little more breathing room, but not very much. Now batting number three, Noah Reichel. Now two outs here. Liberty Hill in their first and third formation. Knock set. First pitch swinging. 
by Reichold. And Leary will go tell something to Knox. Little opportunity. Reichold will go talk to Coach Darling on third base. O one count to Reichold. Liberty Hill looking to get out of the inning and come back and score at least one in the bottom half. Pitch. Yolder goes. Fouled right back at us for strike number two. Now with two strikes, Knox will attack the strike zone here. Has a pitch to give, but can't allow it to get past Riley. Reichold back into the box with an 0-2 count. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Knox set. Pitch from Knox. Runner goes. They'll throw it down. Unable to get the runner. So now the Grizzlies with runners on second and third. Reichold with a one, th one and two count. Knox set. Pitch to Reichold. Curveball. Grounded foul down the third baseline. We'll keep the count at one and two. If you're just joining us, Liberty Hill currently trailing 4-3, to three, top of the 7th. The Grizzlies runner on 2nd and 3rd. Knox on the mound for Liberty Hill. Pitch from Knox. F high fastball chased by Reichold for out number 3. We are heading to the bottom half of the 7th, where Liberty Hill will look to score one run to tie the ball game and extend it, or two runs to win this ball game. We'll take a short 30-second break. I am Jason Hebner. You are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. Welcome back to Liberty Hill here. And we have an exciting ball game. Or a nervous one if you're Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill looking to tie or win this ball game here. Only needing one run to tie. Any more than that would result in a win. They'll have a new pitcher on the mound for the Grizzlies. Number 20, Heath McCormick. Harris able to go six innings of strong work and give the Grizzlies a chance at the win here. Grizzlies looking for their first district win of the season, but they'll have to go through the top of the Panther order before they can do it. It'll be Leary Thomas Knox for Liberty Hill. And they will look to do what the Leander Lions did to them almost a week and a half ago. If you're unaware, Leander able to come back down 1-2 to two in the bottom of the 7th, able to come back and win that ball game in a heartbreaking loss for Liberty Hill. The Liberty Hill will look to pick up the win here in the bottom of the seventh, facing Heath McCormick for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill will need some offensive production, which they've struggled with this game, and frankly, all of this district campaign. McCormick finished with his warm-ups on the mound and will get started here with the bottom of the seventh. Ryan Leary will head to the plate. Now batting number 12, Ryan Leary. Leary will look to reach base and provide a spark for this top of the Panther order will face McCormick for the first time. McCormick from the stretch. First pitch. Fastball down the in the zone is fouled out of play down the right field line. Strike one. Come on, 
0-1 count for Leary. He'll step back up to the plate. McCormick taking his sign from Click. Set now. Pitch to Leary. Curveball. Outside. We'll work the count to one and one. One one count for Leary. McCormick set the pitch. High fastball. Leary watches it. Works the count to two and one. Liberty Hill fans excited for the potential here. Pitch from McCormick. That fastball popped into left center field. Center fielder going back, camped out under it, able to make the catch for route number one. Panthers with two outs to give here. Fly out by Leary. Brings up Andon Thomas, who will look to reach base. And start the comeback for Liberty Hill. Thomas, a lefty junior, steps into the plate. First pitch curveball, low. Works to count to 1 0. The Grizzlies looking to hold out the Panthers for their first district win of the year. McCormick set, pitch to Thomas. Fastball outside, 2 0. Thomas steps back into the box. McCormick, the pitch. Fastball in there for strike number one. Two one count to Thomas. Pitch. Fastball high and away. Now three and one. Liberty Hill desperately needing base runners. And a chance to tie or win this ball game. McCormick now. Pitch to Thomas. That fastball is in there. Fouled down the third base line. The Grizzly third baseman, Caleb Yolder, able to come up with it. Right at the fence. A difficult play. Not fast enough to it. Now Thomas with a full count. Working. Two... McCormick. Thomas, the Panthers football middle linebacker. Had a few clutch moments there season. Looking to have a few clutch moments in this one. That pitch. Grounded a shortstop. Thomas running it out. He will be called out at first base. And we'll have two outs now. Panthers down to one out and will bring up Jackson Knox Grizzlies are one out away from securing their first district victory of the season and Liberty Hill trying to stay alive and not get upset by the Grizzlies one out to give here in the bottom of the seventh inning First pitch to Knox. Curveball outside. 1 0. McCormick set. Pitch. Fastball hit by Knox. Foul down the third baseline. Knox in his last at bat. Able to double down the left field line. He's looking to find uh, any way on in this one. That ball bounced off the fence and went into fair. Fair play. They'll get that off the field. And play will resume. Oh, Knox with a 1-1 one, one count. McCormick trying to get the save for the Grizzlies. McCormick the pitch. Fastball inside. 2-1 and one to Knox. Knox, 2-1 count. Pitch from McCormick. Curveball, low. Works the count to 3-1. and one. If Knox is able to walk here, 
It put the tying run on first base for Logan Dyer. McCormick set, pitch to Knox. That fastball, it's on the outside half for strike one, and now works the count to full. Full count for Knox, two outs, no outs to give for Liberty Hill. Trying to come back against the Grizzlies on a two-out rally. Pitch for McCormick. Fastball popped out of play by Knox. Doing a good job of staying alive here in this pressured situation for the Panthers. Knox back up to the plate now. McCormick sets. Pitch for McCormick. Fastball fouled back again by Knox. Knox not going to go away easily. He'll look to find a way on against McCormick and try to start a spark for Liberty Hill. Full count to Knox. Knox steps back up to the plate. McCormick set now. Pitch for McCormick. Fastball hit by Knox into left field. Liberty Hill has some life here. Liberty Hill, runner on first base in Knox, and Dyer is now at the plate. Liberty Hill only needing one run to tie this ball game. And Dyer will head to the plate. Looking to keep the inning alive and the ball game alive, frankly, for Liberty Hill. Dyer. The Panther cleanup hitter, only a sophomore. Dyer will need some senior experience here at this plate appearance. McCormick set, first pitch to Dyer. Fastball high and away for ball number one. If Dyer is able to reach base, he'll bring out number 10, Caden Noonschwander, and he'll have a crack at McCormick. McCormick, 1-0 count to Dyer, pitch. That fastball is in the dirt for ball number two. Liberty Hill fans have some life here. Trying to fluster McCormick. Tying run on first base. Pitch. That ball in there for strike one. Gives a two and one count to Dyer. Dyer has some power. Pitch for McCormick. That fastball is low in the dirt. Knox is going to go. He'll have to get down. He is there at second base. So now, tying run in scoring position for Dyer with a 3-1 count. No outs to give for Liberty Hill. Dyer looking to find a way on or find a way to drive in Knox. McCormick set. Checks Knox. Pitch to the plate. Fastball outside for ball number four. Liberty Hill now with the winning run on first base. Tying run on second. And Caden Nudeschwander will come to the plate. Not before. Coach Coach Darling for the Grizzlies will go out and talk to McCormick. McCormick not in a huge troubling situation from that point of view. Two outs. Tying run on second base. But Liberty Hill and Cade Noonschwander really looking to extend this ball game. If Noonschwander is able to get on base or drive in a run with it, that'd create a tie ball game and Cash Durkin would come to the plate. But Noonschwander will have to find a way to extend this Panther life. Liberty Hill currently down, if you're just joining us, Liberty Hill currently down 3-4, to four, bottom of the 7th, two outs, runners on 1st and 2nd, that puts the winning run on 1st, tying run on 2nd, sophomore Cade Noonschwanner stepping up to the plate, facing McCormick, McCormick having walked the last two batters. First pitch, fastball in the zone. Actually, McCormick only walked to Dyer, uh, Knox reached on a single into left field. 0-1 count to Noonschwanner, McCormick set. Pitch to Noonchwander. That curveball is in the dirt. Works the count to one and one. And 
and on deck is actually number 14, Blaze Milam. He would be hitting in for Durkin as he was subbed in last inning. McCormick now the pitch, 1-1. A hit in the left field, being waved around. The tying run, Knox will reach home. Had a runner on third. Now the tied ball game. Knox able to reach home on the Noonschwander RBI double. We have a tie ball game here in Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill, a chance to win this ball game with Blaze Milam. Some much needed offensive energy from the Panther offense, and they'll send Blaze Milam to the plate with the winning run on third base. Fine. This is Milam's first or second at bat of the district campaign. A great pitcher. He'll face McCormick here. First pitch. Fastball high for ball one. Panther fans on their feet looking to complete this comeback and avoid the upset from the Grizzlies. Tied ball game. So worst case scenario, we go into extra innings. But a pitch for McCormick here. That ball is low for ball number two. Liberty Hill looking to win this game right here with Milam at the plate. Dyer at third base. The winning run. Pitch for McCormick. Fastball. Called strike one. Milam will have to swing the bat and drive in Dyer to win this ball game. Pitch for McCormick. At fastball. Low. Brings it to a 3-1 count. If Milam is walked here, looks like I'll bring up number 22, Tyler Williams. McCormick set, delivers the pitch. That fastball, outside. Bases will be loaded for Tyler Williams. Winning run on third base. Williams will be the pinch hitter with the winning run on third base. The winning run on third base for Liberty Hill looking to get their fourth win of this district campaign. After a kind of sloppy game early, they've put some had some offensive spark here in the bottom half of the seventh with the winning run on third base. Williams at the plate. First pitch from McCormick. Fastball low for ball number one. McCormick set. Pitch to Williams. That fastball chased. Brings the count to one and one. One one count for Williams. Winning run on third. Pitch. Grounded. Foul. Down the third baseline. It'll work Williams to one and two. Williams with one, only one strike to, no strikes to give here. We'll have to find a way to move Dyer to the plate or we will go into extras here at Liberty Hill. McCormick Taking his sign, now set. They slowed for Liberty Hill, winning run on third base. Williams, that curveball is chased for out number three. And we're going to head to extra innings here in Liberty Hill. We'll take, we'll take a break, and we'll be back for the top of the eighth inning at Liberty Hill. I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Woo the officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, 
the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to Liberty Hill. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Something you don't hear much in high school baseball. Uh, we're in the top of the eighth inning. If you were with me earlier when I was going through these possibilities when the ball game was tied at three, uh, I heard last week there was a high school game here in Texas that went 16 innings, and I sure hope, for everyone's sake, that is not tonight. Hopefully, Liberty Hill, with the momentum, can shut them down. Them, as in the Glen Grizzlies, shut them down here in the top of the eighth, go score in the bottom of the eighth, and win this ball game. Both teams battling hard, looking for their looking for a solid district win. On the mound for Liberty Hill is number 15, Connor Sherburn, his third district appearance. Will look to shut down the Grizzlies and put the Panthers' offense at the plate. Now leading off for the Grizzlies was the starting pitcher, number 22, Holden Harris. Sherburn will work from the windup. He'll step off. Him and Riley not on the same page. Riley will go out and talk his signs over. Quick little conversation. And Riley will jog back to the plate. If you're just joining us, we're in extra innings here at Liberty Hill. Ball game tied at four after a Caden Nunchwander RBI single to tie the ball game in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch from Sherburn. Fastball popped out of play down the right field line. Milam was chasing it, now playing first base, but he was not able to make the play as it was out of play. Now an 0-1 count to Harris. Sherburn, pitch, curveball, grounded foul into the Panther dugout. It's now an 0-2 count to Harris. Sherburn will look to retire him here. Pitch from Sherburn. Fouled once again into the Panther dugout by Harris. Harris, as I noted, was a starting pitcher at tonight's ball game for the Grizzlies. Went six innings of work and gave the Grizzlies a chance at the win before the Liberty Hill offense rallied back with two outs in the bottom of the seventh to tie the ball game and send this, send this district matchup into extra innings. Sherburn facing Harris with an 0-2 count. Winds up, delivers. Curveball. Harris watches for strike number three. One out. Liberty Hill liking the curveball from Sherburn. Looking to keep the momentum heading into the bottom half of the eighth here. We'll have a pinch hitter here for the Grizzlies. Looks to be... Number 13, Rome Foranato. First pitch from Sherbert. That pitch is fouled back in into the net for strike one. Foranato will look to start something in extras for the Grizzlies. Sherburn, pitch, fastball way inside. Moves the count to one and one. Sherburn winds up, delivers. That fastball is hit out of play. Brings it to a 1-2 count on to Foranato. Ball game tied at four. Sherburn the pitch. Curveball fouled into the Panther dugout by Foranato. Ball game tied at four. We are in extra innings after Liberty Hill able to tie the ball game in the bottom of the seventh with two outs on a K. Nunchwander RBI double. Unable to convert for the win. 
sent the game into extra innings. Sherburn on the mound in his first inning of work. Pitch. At fastball inside. Works a count to two and two on pinch hitter for Anato for the Grizzlies. One out here in the eight, top of the eighth. Pitch from Sherburn. Curveball. Low for ball three. Check swing for Ornato did not go, says the field umpire. And we'll work the count to full. Sherburn, working from the windup, takes a sign from Riley. Delivers. Curveball high for Ornato will jog down to first base. Go ahead run on first base for the Grizzlies. Liberty Hill will look. Liberty Hill will look for a ground ball here from the relief pitcher last inning, number 20, Heath McCormick. And a double play to end this top half of the eighth. Sherburn checks for Nato. Goes to the plate. First pitch fastball, high. Ball one. Stands here at Liberty Hill Panther baseball field, kind of overflowing as the softball game must have finished. Fans residing over to the baseball field to look at this district contest as that pitch was fouled off by McCormick. We'll keep the count at one and one. Sherburn checking for an auto. Pitch to the plate. Curveball in there, strike two. Sherburn can use that curveball in all counts. Not afraid to use it. First pitch or late in a count like he may here. Checks for an auto. Set now. Pitch. Curveball. Grounded to Noonschwander. Able to make the play. We'll throw the second. Unab unable, or we're going to say it's in the transfer, so he'll be, maybe, be not signal, yeah, he's out. They signal in the transfer at second base from Knox as he was trying to make the throw to first base, so we'll have two outs here at Liberty Hill after a great play by Noonschwander. With so, so McCormick will reach first on the fielder's choice uh, after the out at second base. Field umpire said it was on the transfer. We'll have a pinch runner at first base for the Grizzlies. And the batter for the Grizzlies is Luke Berryhill. Sherburn with two outs in the top of the eighth. Looking to keep the game tied. And for the Liberty Hill offense to go ahead in the bottom half of this inning. Pitch, curveball, low for ball one. McCormick on first base for the Grizzlies to go ahead run. Sherburn, pitch, fastball, fouled back, brings the count to one and one. Barry Hill with a 1-1 count at the plate. Two outs here in the top of the eighth with a go-ahead run on first for the Grizzlies. Sherburn on the mound for the Panthers. Pitch from Sherburn. A curveball popped into right center field. Dyer looks to be calling it. Able to make the catch for out number three. We are heading to the bottom of the eighth inning where the Liberty Hill Panthers will look to take the lead and win this ball game here in extra innings. I am Jason Hebner, and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student-athletes right here in Texas. 
High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Well, welcome back to Panther Baseball Field, where Liberty Hill will take to the plate and look to win this ball game here in the bottom of the eighth inning. McCormick back on the mound for the Grizzlies. And it looks like Jack Stavanoa will lead the Panthers off. Liberty Hill, with this game in extra innings, will have to wake up early in the morning as they travel to the Eastview High School, play a midday Saturday game at 1 o'clock. You can listen in here at Vibe Live. I appreciate it a lot. And I hope you enjoy it yourself. McCormick will step off. Stavano will try to lead off something, or start something here for Liberty Hill. Steps back up to the plate. McCormick set. First pitch to Stavanoa. Fastball way outside. Works the count to 1-0. and oh. Looks like on deck looks to be Garrett Neely. We'll get the pinch hit nod for Carson Riley. Maybe coming in at catcher. Next inning. That pitch hit hard. Down the right field line, but foul by Stavanoa. Now a 1-1 count. It is senior night in Liberty Hill, and these seniors would really like to win this game, as many would on their senior night. That's a 2-1 count now. Also worth noting, this is a critical game. Panthers really need a win here for their district standings and their potential playoff seedings as we approach the second half of the district play. Pitch from McCormick. Fastball fouled out of play. Brings the count to 2-2. Two two. Liberty Hill currently tied for third in District 25-5A. Let's see if the standings have updated of tonight's games. They have not. Pitch from McCormick here. That fastball roped into right field. This will be trouble. Stavano will go for two. He will be up at two with a winning run at second base for Liberty Hill. Yeah, Gary Neely. So now, with the winning run on second base, brings up number two, Garrett Neely, pinch hitting for Carson Riley, looking to score the winning run for Liberty Hill. No outs in the inning. Liberty Hill looking to end this ball game here. Go catch a night's rest and be back here in the morning as they travel to Eastview. McCormick sets. Will pick second base. No throws to Avanoa back. We're if you're just joining us, we're tied at four. Liberty Hill currently has the winning run on second base here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They'll check Stavanoa again. Liberty Hill could be bunting here. Something Coach Hutcherson may do. I wouldn't be surprised. No bunt shown. First pitch fastball fouled back by Neely. First strike number one. Not sure what's. Oh, Neely has a necklace on. They've asked him to remove it. He'll remove it now. He's having a little bit of a struggle removing his necklace. There, kind of intertwined with his mask. He got it off, 
and he'll look to be heading back to the plate. He'll put his batting gloves back on and look to, br to bring Stavadoa in and give the Liberty Hill Panthers a district win here in extra innings. No outs here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Neely back up to the plate with an 0-1 count. McCormick on the mound for the Grizzlies. Goes to the plate. Shown bunt. Lays down a bunt. Stavano will be able to get to third. One out in the inning with the winning run on third base. A very nicely executed bunt by Neely. Puts a winning run on third base for Liberty Hill with the senior Ryan Leary coming up to the plate. Coach Hutch happy with Neely's bunt as Ryan Leary will look to end this game here on senior night as the senior committed to Texas State to continue his athletic career. It looks like they've elected to intentionally walk Ryan Leary. Leary and the catcher exchanging a few words there. Of course they were friendly encouragements. Um, you know, like, you're such a great player. Things of that nature. No negative comments at all. But now, Liberty Hill with a runner on first and third. Winning run on third base. We'll bring up Andon Thomas. Glenn will put in their first and third defensive set. And Thomas will look to win the game here for Liberty Hill. Thomas facing McCormick. McCormick set. First pitch. Fastball grounded up the middle. Leary will be out. They're going to call him safe at first. And Stavano and Liberty Hill will win the ball game on a fielder's choice. And Thomas able to run out the ground ball. Called safe at first. And that will be a win the ball game. Um, both teams a little fired up here. They're going to do a good job of getting these teams separated. As Liberty Hill really needed that win, and the Glenn Grizzlies were really invested in this ball game as, we, as they were looking for the first district win of the season. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with a short post-game analysis of this ball game. I'm Jason Hebner, and you listened to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape. Meet new people and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Ralph. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back to Liberty Hill, where the Liberty Hill Panthers were able to win this district matchup between the Glen Grizzlies in extra innings here in the bottom of the eighth. I mean, a very close game all night. Both teams fighting back and forth, scoring one run here, one run there. Um, good pitching performances by both teams. Uh, Holden Harris for the Grizzlies, able to hold Liberty Hill to three runs, gave the Grizzlies a chance at the win. Liberty Hill... Uh, Roden able to go four innings, four strong innings, then Knox three strong innings. Sherburn will be credited with the win he, as he pitched the top of the eighth, able to hold the Grizzlies there. Um, so th in the district standings, this moves Liberty Hill to four and three in district play, 
and we should have them, at a worst, tied for third still. That will be good for their playoff seating as they head into the second half of district play here. Next, or this Saturday, tomorrow, at Eastview High School. Currently, our s district standings are Cedar Park in one, Leander in two, Liberty Hill, Rouse, and Georgetown, all in th all tied for third. Marble Falls in four, Eastview in five, Leander Glen in last, as they nearly picked up their first district win of the season. I mean, this is a fiery uh, East or Gl sorry, gr Grizzly squad that was able to capitalize on mistakes from the Panthers and nearly sent them packing. I think the key takeaway from this game is, even though it was not a pretty victory, Liberty Hill was able to find a way to win, which is something they've kind of lacked this season in some close games, like if you look at the Leander game, the Georgetown game, both kind of close games, just unable to finish them or find like a winning drive per se, and they found that tonight, able to beat the beat the Grizzlies, and that moves us into tomorrow, where we take on the Eastview Patriots, one o'clock at Eastview High School. Um, I will be there broadcasting this game live. I'd love for if you could listen in. Uh, I know it's a Saturday. You may have something to do. Just pop it in your phone, listen to audio. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And you st get to stick around with Liberty Hill Panther Baseball. And that about that about does it here at Liberty Hill. And we have a short turnaround here. Both teams do. As both teams are playing on Saturday. As we were unable to play earlier in the week due to state testing. Which requ UIL requires you can't play before or on state testing days. So that was our reasoning. So we'll play tomorrow on Saturday. Eastview High School. 1 o'clock. Listen in here. Uh, for this game, for Jason Hebner, for Cameron Songer, my QA, for Merle Bertrand of Vipe over there, I'd like to thank you for listening in, and have a great night.